So welcome to the third video in the Vector Component of the Mechanics course. In this video we'll be looking at the description of one, two and three dimensional vectors. So the aim when describing a vector is to allow somebody else to redraw exactly the same vector. And in order to do this then we need to know three things. We need to know the vector starting point or the origin, uh, the vector magnitude and direction. So the focus of this video will be on the calculation of the vector magnitude and direction in all dimensions. To describe a vector, I usually use the following four steps. So the step one is the problem setup. So if there's no diagram, then I draw the diagram, and from the diagram I then write the vector equation. So in this step, this is my translation of my problem statement into my mathematical equation. And once I have the mathematical, math mathematical equation, I then calculate the vector magnitude and direction, and with these two components, I can then describe the vector. So our first example is a one-dimensional vector. It's a nice case. In this case, our step one is to write the vector equation, and we can do that by reading straight from the diagram. We can see that our vector magnitude, or our vector length, is three centimetres, and it's pointing in the negative x direction, or the minus i direction, if we use our unit vector notation. So that would give us a vector equation of i equals to minus three i. Our next two steps to calculate the magnitude and the direction are not necessary in the one-dimensional case, which is nice, because we already have them from the diagram. And that leaves us with our final step, which is to describe our vector. The only important point in this is that the description has to be unambiguous. So in this case, we could say something like our vector r is equal to 3 centimetres in the negative direction, or something like r is equal to minus 3i. And we're done. So in our two-dimensional case, we follow exactly the same procedure. Um, things are slightly more complicated, but not much. So we can see from our diagram that our vector is in the xy plane. Um, so we know that it has a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. And the question is then, how do we combine those to make our vector equation? Um, we just write them as a linear combination, or a sum. So our vector r is equal to the sum of the x component in the i direction and the y component in the j direction. And reading straight off the diagram, we can see the values for those components, and that gives us our vector equation of r equals 4i plus 3j. Once we have the equation, now we need to calculate the magnitude. And I find it easier if I redraw the diagram. So we can see now that because we're working in the xy plane, and the x-axis and the y-axis are at 90 degrees to each other, we have uh, a right angle triangle of which r is the hypotenuse. So that means that we can use Pythagoras, which is very nice. And this is true for any two dimensional vector because all three of the axes in the Cartesian system are at three uh, right angles to each other, so any combination of them will always produce a right angle triangle. So since we know we can use Pythagoras, uh, we know that Pythagoras, by Pythagoras, we can say that r squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, which gives us our lovely equation. And from that, from our values, we can simply calculate that the magnitude is five units in this case. And similarly, when we calculate the direction, we can also use the right angle triangle to our advantage. So our direction is given by the angle theta uh, in this case, so we can use any one of our trig identities. So either sine, cos, or tan to give us our angle theta. I'm using sine because the values for r, y, and rx were given to me on the question. And that gives us an angle of 36.9 degrees. The final step is to describe our vector. Um, so in this case, we could say something like, we have a magnitude of five units in a direction of positive 36.9 degrees from the x-axis. And our final case, in our three-dimensional case, is very similar indeed to our two-dimensional case. So step one, we draw the diagram. So here's our diagram, we've drawn in our vector r, and you'll see I've also drawn in um, the projection of r onto the xz plane, so that's the line h, and um, we'll see the reason for that in a minute. But exactly the same as in the two-dimensional case, when we write our vector equation, we write it as a sum of the components of the vector. In this case, we've got three components because we have three, dim three dimensions. Uh, and again, we can just read the magnitude of those components straight off the diagram, and we find that our vector equation of r is equal to 6i plus 5j plus 4k.
Once we have this equation, we can then calculate our magnitude. So we do this again. Again, we're in our Cartesian system. We're in our three-dimensional space. So we know we can work with Pythagoras. And the only difference is that we need to use Pythagoras twice. So here we're looking first at this triangle. We want a magnitude of r. So r by this triangle by Pythagoras is equal to h squared plus ry squared. We have a value for ry from our diagram, but we don't know h. So the second time we use Pythagoras is then to calculate h. And h belongs to the highlighted triangle, so by Pythagoras we can just write that h squared is equal to rx squared plus rz squared. And if we substitute the second equation straight back into the first one, we can get a lovely easy equation for calculating the magnitude or the length of our vector r. It's just equal to the sum of the squares of each of its components. If we substitute in our numbers from our equation, we can see that in this case we get a value of r of 8.77 units. Part 3 is calculate our direction, and once again our direction is given by our angle theta, and we do this exactly the same as for the two-dimensional case, no changes. So we can see that our vector r is part of this particular right angle triangle, and so we can use any one of our trig identities. In this case, just for something different, I'll use the sine identity, and we find that we have a theta equal to 34.7 degrees. Our vector description will then be something similar to our vector is 8.77 units long and at an angle of 34 point, positive 34.7 degrees from the x end plane. So that's it for the description of vectors. All we need to know is the origin, we need to calculate the magnitude and the direction. And in the next videos we'll start to look at what to do with these vectors, so vector algebra.